Welcome back to Mobile, Alabama. We're at Tony Ruggiero's place. He's back there with Michael Johnson, one of his web.com players. We are hanging out this weekend. Got some fun plan. Going to bring you along for the ride. We watched some lessons on KVS. You're working with Michael Johnson here. Uh, he's hitting it off the toe. Right. Walk me through the process of, of finding the solution. What were some of the things that you tried and what ended uh, up you working? You know, first we fixed posture, right? You know, and then, the, you know, then we figured out, okay, why is he hitting it off the toe? You know, or is it one, what's he look like at impact? And it was obvious that his low point or the bottom of his arc was happening behind the ball. And, you know, and we went through a bunch of video. It wasn't real hard to figure out that he was shifting off the ball. So that, that one wasn't too hard to deduce from the beginning. That's been a constant through the work we've done with Michael. We got him a little further away from the ball, which is an easy thing to try first, and he was too close to the ball. And so that, that made it a little bit better, right? But then, you know, then you had to start looking at, like, okay, well, what's it look like going through impact? and. Uh, why are the hands getting too high coming into it? And that makes the toe go down and into the ball, those types of things. So the real key though is in the end, Michael basically figured it out. We led him down the road and then he figured out the feel that made him do it. I mean, you know, and, and I think that when you do that, I think you got a better chance that they can play with it. You know, so one of the things I like to use KVS for is not just assessment, but after the fact, just verify that we're on the right track and we did the right things and that the numbers all back it up. So I just did some modeling for that little KVEST demo, but if you're not familiar, KVEST is 3D motion capture. So I had a sensor on uh, my thorax, the shoulders, one on the pelvis, uh, one on the lead arm and then wrist and hand, and we're looking at some different things, doing some training. It's pretty cool stuff, really interesting ways that you can use that to analyze uh, the golf swing and then train it with that biofeedback mode. I don't know if you saw me doing that with the with the arms there, we're looking at the extension and flexion of the lead wrist and kind of training that throughout. So, cool stuff. Hey everybody, welcome to the backyard session. <laughs> oh, we're actually filming this too. It's filming. Oh. I know, amazing. Good thing I wore my best t-shirt. <laughs> so what does it take? You, uh, how many years have you been on the web? Uh, just two years. Two years, okay. So what does it take for you this year to go to the PGA Tour? So when we started working, middle of the year before, we had a couple things we worked on, and he played really well. He went from not playing very good at all and not making any money, didn't even wasn't even really set for being in the playoffs, to where he had some top fives, and, and you know we had these things that we worked on, and I mean everybody like I learned that from Woody and from Wayne. You have your things that you work on and you don't stray, and we did a really nice job with that through the first part of the year and then you get in the middle of 11 in a row and a guy is hitting it off the toe he's driving it like shit and he's hitting it all over well it's hard to not give in to human nature to start trying to try things and then you get to me you get three weeks down the road and you've tried 12 different things and you're so far away from the things that you know with him would work that, that you know but but i mean i think we knew that we kind of knew that towards the end and we were like look we sat down down at the web tour championship and he said like you know we just talked about the off season like maybe he's like maybe i'll play good this week maybe i won't but what do we need to do to be better for next year and we both agreed like okay we're gonna stick to what we know works for me and i got to get back to driving it better we'll figure that out and if i do that and i have a good plan i'm gonna be fine next year i mean he's one without question it's not just because he's one of our he's one of the most talented guys out there i mean he almost won a pga tour event one of his first starts at auburn i mean so he can play out there everybody acknowledges it we just gotta you know just stick with our plan yeah no i mean it's i would say the player 
probably panics before the teacher, and that it puts the teacher in a tough spot. I mean, as a player, you're asking the teacher to help you play better tomorrow, and it's the golf doesn't work like that, uh, unfortunately. But I think that's the hardest part as a teacher. I mean, you guys know. I mean, I'm sure. I mean, like. I mean, I think we all know sometimes when we're on the tee with them at a tour event that nothing we're going to tell them is going to make them have a good week. But you can't tell I mean, you can't. T I mean, it's hard to tell them that. Like, I mean, we, we don't have a shot, you know. I mean, and sometimes it's not their golf swing. It's their frame of mind and things going on at home and this, that, and the other. And But, you know, I mean, I think that's the hard part about what we do. So there's got to be some patience with the plan. Nobody nobody wants that. They all want it this week, this, this tournament. Um, you know, for sure by the next tournament. There's got to be some patience and some trust in the plan that the plan's going to be good. And if we work the plan long enough, the, the fundamentals are going to get better and everything's going to in, improve in time. Patience is the hardest thing and because everybody wants it right now. So everybody wants it right now, but everybody has to have some sort of patience and trust in the plan that it will work. I think that's one of the hardest things. So when is it time to be patient and when is it time to change um probably when you least want to be patient is when you should be patient <laughs> uh golf yeah. is golf is backwards the more you aim right you probably will miss more left i mean it's just backwards. it's a backward sport it's the most frustrating best sport there is <laughs>
sort of idea of being a little bit more present. So the gist of, of what you want everyone to do though is to be an observer, right? Like if you could say one thing to Yeah, I think to everybody. Uh, being an observer, not an owner of what we think. It's that's the same thing as just being aware. Observing as if you were maybe above. Watching those thoughts instead of responding to those thoughts. That allows us to connect to our direct experience in a much more sort of natural way. So we're not clouded by what we're thinking, thinking about what might happen or what already happened. We can just be right here with what is right now. Welcome to Car Rides with the Dew Sweeper. If they're gonna try to get better, I think they ought to be serious about getting better. Like they ought to have a real plan. They ought to consult somebody. And this is a big thing for me, like, actually go to somebody who's actually made somebody good before i mean there's so many people out there that like they sell insurance and then they just pop up and start teaching golf you know those types i mean go to somebody who's actually had success not just a marketing plan somebody that's made people better and have a real plan and be serious about it do the work but then when they go play golf i mean they should they should enjoy playing A lot of golfers assume that they'll find enjoyment once they achieve something, meaning once I shoot a certain score or I get to a certain handicap, then that's when I'll really enjoy myself. And flipping that sometimes can bring about the achievement much quicker, I think. If you can find, like Tony was saying, some sort of process that you stick to and understand that you're, you're gradually improving and find fulfillment that way daily instead of pinning all your fulfillment uh, on some sort of distant achievement, like a goal of shooting a certain score, then you're going to be engaged in a much healthier way. So last night we traveled from Mobile down to Panama City Beach, Florida at the Bay Point Resort here. We are here earlier this year in a video that you probably watched and uh, hanging out today we're shooting some videos, we're just shooting with Greg and um, hanging out here, a bunch of good junior players as there always are to do sweeper camp. practice rounds when you're standing on a tee box like this maybe you haven't played the course right and what are you trying to do determine your club your target with the club you're gonna to want to hit off the tee right with the objective being how are you gonna put yourself in the best position to make birdie right so what I would suggest is take your longest club driver right hit one and then maybe the lowest club that or the highest club that you would tee off with do you have a driving iron yeah. right four iron, three iron, hit both of those. Driver, and then your four iron or driving iron or whatever you got. Now, you can determine from those two, right, the shortest possible drive you'd maybe hit and the longest, where would be the best spot in between those to hit, and what club from there was gonna put you in the best position to make birdie. Instead of hitting a driver and a three wood, if you hit a driver and a different club that's a little bit farther back in your lineup, now you have much more, a wider range to make a decision from. You're trying to determine the best spot from which you can make birdie, whether that's driver or four, and in between there, you're gonna find the right club to hit. Make sense? 